Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ian Watts, and I'm um, an automation specialist on the platform services team. And uh, I'm going to be talking about Argo CD, which is a uh, Kubernetes specific uh, tool and probably one that uh, most of you have not used in the past because uh, you probably haven't been on like a Kubernetes or OpenShift platform other than this one. Um, as teams come onto the platform, uh, they have to get adjusted to uh, the new way of doing things, the way everything works and the tools that are involved. And that's part of the reason why we have these community meetups and, and, and rocket chat and the support for all of the teams to make those adjustments. So Argo CD is a, a, a pretty cool tool. And uh, so I'll just give you a description of it and uh, we'll walk through some of its uh, features, what it does and uh, what it doesn't do. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay, uh, by the way, uh, feel free to raise a hand, ask a question along the way. Uh, I think we're going to have uh, plenty of time to go through this, um, but uh, you know, don't be afraid to, uh, to uh, interrupt with some questions if you do have them. Um, but before we um, talk about Argo CD, it bears uh, repeating, you know, what is GitOps? This is a, an important concept, and this is really what this whole platform is all about. Um, it's a way of managing your infrastructure and your applications based on files in a Git repository. Um, Git is then your single source of truth uh, for your, you know, declarative application configuration, your declarative uh, infrastructure, okay? So that's important to keep in mind, especially with Argo CD here. Um, it lends itself well to automation, uh, whether it's uh, the creation of pull requests or merging of pull requests. Um, and it was designed to kind of break down some of those barriers between developers and uh, infrastructure. Uh, so this whole DevOps um, kind of philosophy uh, can take root and uh, really just to improve the flow uh, from development to production um, really in all ways. Uh, now shifting gears a little bit um, in Kubernetes or OpenShift, which is built on Kubernetes, um, all of your resources, whether they are, you know, it's a deployment, a route, a service, a network policy, or what have you, um, is defined uh, by a YAML file um, somewhere, okay? If you create a YAML file on your local system and you want to make a change in your namespace, you can run an OC apply command like this uh, and change the resource uh, manually directly in your namespace. Um, so what that really means though, is that <laughs> this is something that can be easily automated. An Argo CD is a declarative GitOps continuous delivery tool for Kubernetes and OpenShift. Um, and really what you're getting there is if you take all of your resource manifests, all of those YAML files, and you put them in a repo, uh, and then you point Argo CD at that repo, it will automatically monitor that repo and it'll apply any changes to those manifests in your namespaces. So th this is really just a combination of, you know, your GitOps and your resource manifests in Argo CD. So there's a lot of nice things about that. Um, and we've been using it uh, on the platform services team for some time now to manage cluster level uh, resources and applications. And, uh, and we like it a lot. But now what we want to do is have another instance of Argo CD that the, that the project teams can use uh, for the deployment of your applications, if you want. You don't have to, but if you want to. So if, when you do this though, uh, all of your resources, your application definitions, configurations, this is from the Argo CD website, and environments are declarative and version controlled, which is a good thing. Application deployment and lifecycle management uh, can be automated, audited, and easy to understand. So what that really means is that 
the details of your deployments are transparent. If you want to go and, and, and see what's supposed to be there, all you have to do is look at those files in your Git repository. When changes are made in your environment, there is a Git record of all of those changes. You can go back and look through your commits or your pull requests and see what changes were made when, exactly what changes were made. If you need to roll back a change, you can just revert to that previous commit. That'll update the files that uh, Argo CD sees, and it'll update your deployments accordingly. Um, and another nice thing is that when you update those manifests in your Git repository, uh, Argo CD can automatically synchronize your namespace so that you don't have to do anything other than if your pipeline updates the files in that Git repo, it's going to be automatically uh, implemented in your namespace by Argo CD. So Argo CD is the continuous deployment part of your CI CD pipeline. Okay, it's not the CI part, uh, but it does handle the deployment. Okay, that's an important note, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, also, another little bonus here is that, you know, you have all of these uh, resource files, these manifest files in your Git repository. If you have, if you're a developer and you have like a local Kubernetes cluster uh, and you want to do some testing yourself, you can take those same manifest files and apply them in your own offline environment uh, without any special tools. You could apply them manually or you could install Argo CD if you wanted. But in other words, these are transferable things. This is, there's, there isn't a vendor lock-in, you know, with uh, these manifest files. These are generic for Kubernetes and, and for OpenShift. So that's nice. Um, so like I said, the Argo CD is your CD part, right? Um, so you still need a system for building and testing your applications. And I imagine that probably all the project teams uh, have some kind of testing going on after you build an image or you build, um, you know, you're building your application. So for now, this is not going to replace that. You're still going to use that existing pipeline. But if you move to Argo CD, you're going to uh, modify that existing pipeline because now instead of uh, actually deploying the apps or making the changes on the OpenShift cluster, instead you're just going to be updating these manifest files in, in, a, in that Git repo, and then Argo CD will be doing your deployments for you. So you can modify that existing uh, pipeline if you want, or you could just build a new pipeline. Um, which kind of brings us back to what uh, Justin Hewitt was talking about. Um, we have a lot of project teams that are still using Jenkins, and Jenkins, you know, was brought over into uh, the OpenShift cluster because people are used to it, they know how to use it, they can stand it up and migrate into the OpenShift cluster quickly and easily, um, and, and that's a good thing, right? But um, as Justin pointed out, uh, the resource request to resource usage in the cluster is uh, not well aligned. And one of the big resource hogs is Jenkins. So you have a fairly heavy duty application, more heavy duty than most of the actual applications that are running in the cluster, running in your namespace uh, 24 seven. And what we would like you to know is that there are alternatives and we encourage you to look into them and we're going to share information with you. Uh, and also to keep in mind that at some point there will be costs associated with your cloud presence, uh, whether you stay on the current platform here or if you were to move into uh, another cloud, um, you know, you're going to be paying for the resource resources um, that Jenkins uses. We just want you to be aware of that and start thinking now about how you could uh, make some changes with regards to that, okay? Um, so for running uh, your builds and your tests, uh, that can be done in GitHub Actions. Uh, GitHub Actions is very mature, it's easy to use, uh, full-featured, and all of the workload is done off of the cluster. So 
uh, and it's free. So for us, that's kind of like a win, win, win. Uh, OpenShift Pipelines is gonna be available shortly. Uh, teams are gonna be also uh, encouraged to take a look at that if they're interested. Um, and we may also be bringing Argo workflows um, uh, into availability, but that's a little bit down the road. So if you were to do that, change up your pipeline, let Argo CD handle your deployments, then you don't need to maintain your own Jenkins instances anymore. You're using fewer resources and you're moving to a more modern GitOpsy approach to your whole CI CD pipeline. Okay. So um, how does it work? Like I said, it's just reading those manifests from uh, a source repository. And those can just be, you know, your plain YAML files. Uh, it also supports customize, which is kind of a templating system uh, for Kubernetes. Uh, could be Helm charts, uh, and there's some other options. Um, and so whatever is in your resource files, Argo CD just makes it look like that in the cluster. So if there was a resource and you remove it from the repo, Argo CD is going to remove it from your namespace. Um, and so I think at this point, I'm just looking at the clock too. Um, let me give you, uh, let me show you a little bit about what we're uh, talking about here. So I've got some, oops, sorry. Um, some really simple little test applications uh, that I set up for this purpose. And um, as you can see, this is in the, um, the Kamloops lab cluster. Um, I've got this app, it's got a great name, it's called App2. And I've got one pod uh, running right now. And this app is controlled by Argo CD. Okay. Um, over here, in Argo CD, um, I'm logged in as a user who's on this team called Team One, and I've got two apps set up here. I've got App One, which is uh, configured for dev, uh, test, and prod, and I've got App Two, which is set up for dev and test. Um, it's going to take a look at uh, App Two here. And in Argo CD, you can see that I've got some resources associated with this um, application. Here's a, a service uh, deployment, a network policy, a route uh, with the deployment. Um, I realize most of you probably aren't familiar with this interface, but this is the one pod uh, that's associated with that deployment. Now, um, so this again is defined by a manifest that's in um, a Git repository. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update that repo. Um, and I'm in uh, the folder that Git, uh, that Argo CD is reading for this app. And I'm just gonna update th this directly uh, here just for the demonstration purposes. On this line, I've got the number of replicas for this deployment set to one. So if I go in, and um, change that to two. Okay. Uh, and then I go back to um, my Argo CD interface. If I have uh, automatic synchronization in, uh, uh, enabled, it will automatically pick up that change, but it does, it checks every few minutes. So I'm just gonna manually refresh here. And now it's checked the repo again, and then now it's saying my application is out of sync, which means that the, uh, the presence in the uh, namespace doesn't match what's defined in the, uh, the Git repository. So again, I, I'm just gonna manually sync this rather than wait for the automatic synchronization. So I go ahead to synchronize my application. It shows that just this one deployment is out of sync. The other bits are in sync. I'm gonna synchronize it. <clears throat> it just takes a moment. Now you can see it's going to add another pod. The other pod is up. If I go to uh, my deployment over in my uh, OpenShift you know, interface over here, now I've got two pods running. Okay. Um, now, if I want to, um, let's say this was a mistake. Um, 
and I decide I'm going to change this back again because we're testing, you know, testing is done or whatever. I'm going to change it back to one. Oops. Commit that change. Come back over here. I'll refresh it. It shows out of sync again. I'm going to sync it up. You'll see that this one pod is terminating already and that's going to go away and then I'll be back to one. Okay, so that's a very simple demonstration. All I did was change the number of replicas for this, you know, very simple application. But this would apply to any change that you're making to any of your resources, whether you're adding completely new uh, resources, just modifying them or deleting them. It's going to uh, it's just going to automatically make that so. Okay. Um, so let's go to the Argo CD interface here and um, just take a little look at, uh, at what we've got. So in this application, and again, I've got you know I've got several applications here. Um, take a look at this one. This is app two, just in the dev environment. Um, there's these are the kind of configuration parameters that we're looking at here. Um, the cluster. There's only going to be one option. That's going to be the local cluster. It's going to show up as in cluster for your applications. The namespace is, you know, where, which namespace are we going to make these changes in? So when you get an Argo CD project, um, you'll be able to deploy applications resources to any of the four namespaces in your, you know, license plate. Uh, tools, dev, test, or prod. So this is the dev version of this application. It's going to my dev namespace. The repo URL is the, the Git repository that Argo CD is going to check against. You're going to have a specific uh, repo for your manifests. Um, the branch, uh, you know, or target that it's going to be using, it's going for the main branch, and the path to the application. So those are the main kind of configuration elements for your uh, your Argo CD um, application. Okay. Uh, okay. So um, all right, we don't have a whole lot of time. Let me go back down here. One of the things that um, we need to talk about though is promotions. Um, as you can see in the in the applications list um, over here, you know each application has a different is like a different app for each environment. So how do you get your application to go from dev to test from test to prod? Well, you got a few options there. Um, you could use different branches for the different environments and, and then just replicate your all of your manifest files for each environment and make the environment specific changes in those branches. Uh, you could do a different release for different um, environments. You could use Customize, which is a Kubernetes uh, tool that allows you to create templates um, with overlays, uh, which is actually a very nice system. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. Um, Argo CD is also compatible with Helm charts um, and JSON it. You've got a few options there. Um, uh, so, um, okay. Let's take a look uh, at um, an application that is using Customize. So over here, I've got these two apps in my repository. Um, and in the app folder here, I've got a base directory and I've got an overlays directory. Now this is, again, this is Customize. It's actually really simple to use. And uh, I would encourage anybody who's interested in Argo CD to kind of go down this path first. Um, what you have here is these are your basic, these are your, your YAML manifest files, and there's one for each resource that I have. And there's also one special customization file which lists the, the resources uh, that are controlled by Customize here. Okay. The base version, um, I've associated that with my dev environment for no particular reason, but just uh, these are the base versions. And so that's the basic definition of all of my resources. Customize has an overlays directory, and then in there you can put uh, files for uh, environments where there's a difference between that environment and your base. So in the, say, in the prod environment, 
Um, I, I've defined a couple of small differences here. So for example, replica count, all I have to put in here is I have to have this bit about the, the deployment. And then all I need to do is define what's different from the base. And the only difference in this case is that the number of replicas is different. So my, my files for each environment other than the base is really small, really simple, and very transparent, easy to see exactly what's different between that and your base. Okay. All right. Well, we're almost out of time. So uh, let me do one other thing. I'm going to uh, quickly talk about uh, security. Um, this is a shared instance, um, but we've got some controls around um, how teams are going to use this. And I'll just show that to you real quick here. Um, Okay. In the project uh, here, there's a few limitations. One is the source repositories that you can reference uh, to pull your manifests from. Um, we're going to lock each team into one repository that we're going to add for you, and you're going to have to pull all of your stuff from there. You won't be able to use third party uh, repos, for example. And I can explain why. Uh, later if you're interested. The destinations is the namespaces that you can deploy your resources to. Those are going to be your license plate uh, namespaces, tools, dev, test, and prod. There's going to be one project associated with each uh, license plate. And there's also uh, some restrictions on what kinds of resources you can manage with Argo CD. Uh, we've put a few namespace uh, type resources in here basically to keep people from shooting themselves in the foot. Um, and the access to the project is going to be defined by the this role. And what this means is that anybody who is in this group, which is a key cloak group, um, is going to be able to basically make any modification to any application in this project. So we're saying your team has full access to everything within your own project, but you won't be able to see any other project applications. You won't be able to see the other projects. There's basically uh, you're totally locked in to uh, to your own space here. Um, OK, it's two o'clock. There's a few other things here. There's uh, hooks that can be integrated with um, Argo CD. You can control the, the order in which resources are deployed or updated um, with uh, phases and waves. Um, and uh, we'll be happy to share all that information with anybody that's interested in, in, in being an early adopter. Uh, of Argo CD. If you are interested, um, talk to Alina or or you know or the team on um, uh, on Rocket Chat, and we'll talk to you about getting you set up as an early adopter. The early adopters, it's going to be a little bit of back and forth with us while we refine our documentation and and processes and so on. Uh, and then after that period, we'll open it up to the general community, and you can re uh, access it uh, via the registry. Um, Okay, so now that we're out of time, <laughs> uh, if there's any questions. Thank you, Jan. Um, I'm afraid we're out of time, but uh, everybody is welcome to post their questions in the chat of this meeting and we'll make sure they get answered. It was an awesome demo. I'm sure teams are excited about uh, this new technology and the service, and uh, we'll consider using the combination of GitHub Actions and Argo CD as a replacement for the Jenkins pipelines. We found the developer experience and ease of use was better with Argo than it was with Jenkins. And as the resource conservation or uh, resource utilization optimization becomes the focus on the platform, we hope to get the support from the teams in uh, um, replacing some of the high uh, resource consumption tools like Jenkins with the more modern, more lightweight technologies like Argo and GitHub Actions. Thank you for your attention. I'm going to stop recording right now.